SX-70 manipulation involves taking a blunt object and applying pressure to a still developing Polaroid. Let me show you how it's done. With SX-70 manipulation, you really need items that you can manipulate the image with to push the image around. The tools that are used for this process really vary from the low-tech, which could be a wooden stick that's been uh, sharpened on one side and flattened on the other, to burnishing tools for press-on type. These are becoming harder and harder to find. These are sculpting tools, which come in various shapes from either a wire end to a thicker end, and that's pretty much it. You also may want textured materials, such as coarse sandpaper, in which we can apply a texture to the print, and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we need is the photograph. Manipulations can be done just as the image is, is coming out, use a very light pressure. This creates a banding and a slight distortion. At this point, as the image is coming out, it's a good time, if you want to create something with texture, place something that's, that has texture underneath, in this case, coarse sandpaper. And I'll take the flat end of a wooden dowel and actually transfer that texture to the print. Now, during the first couple of minutes of the image developing, the image is very fragile. So we can actually take objects and create black lines. And this is done through a heavy pressure. At the same time, there is a white pigment in between the layers. And I can take this and with slight rubbing, push that back into the black area, and create white lines. So during this time, while the image is soft, I can actually break it apart, and create colors in the emulsion that didn't exist before. Now we'll give the print another minute or so for the actual emulsion to harden a bit so that I can now do blending. Now as the image comes up and sets more, it becomes a little harder, which allows light pressure to actually push it around. Now, when rubbing, try different amounts of pressure, sometimes going strong and sometimes going heavier. Using different types of points, you can get different images, different effects. This is a Teflon-coated press-on type applicator, burnisher. Now, where the image has had time to begin to set, I can now, through very light pressure, keep the image together so it doesn't break apart and actually blend and manipulate it. We want a highlight? We can place a highlight here. At this point, I'm using a light pressure 
and pushing the layers around. So for the next five minutes, I'd be able to take the time zero film and manipulate it. As time goes on, it becomes harder and harder, which allows more subtle effects to be done. And after the image has come up completely, you can actually freeze the material and come back to it weeks later. All it takes is a hair dryer to warm it up. And here's our manipulated image. And we can compare that to a straight shot. This is an SX-70 camera that's used for this process. This camera hasn't been made for about 20 years, but you can find them at yard sales and camera stores in the used market. Now what you can do is take one of our modern day 600 cameras and actually modify it so that you can use the time zero film. Now this camera is normally designed to use 600 film. What you have to do are two things. One step would be in the loading process. We put a fail-safe in here so that you can't insert the film pack if you have the wrong type of film. So what you need to do is take an old print or a dark slide, insert it about halfway, and then place the film pack over it. That allows the film pack to ride over the guides. Then to compensate for the film speed difference, you need a two-stop neutral density filter that you just tape over the electric eye. Now you have a camera that's been modified to use the Time Zero film, a much better choice over the 600 film.